what's gonna All right. come out of this. And so we're gonna see it right here, right now. We have both of these players really did do a they were dominant in their winner semis matches. Uh, I believe that Jonathan did win 3-0, whereas Teapot won 3-1. But I mean, you guys saw that last game. Uh, so I, I, I think it's going to be fun to see, you know, based on their mutual dominance, now that they're going head to head, who's actually going to be taking it right now. Uh, and I mean, this is definitely a different match than we've seen from either of, you know, these two people play on stream so far. Oh, but, but I don't even know. He's gone. He's dead. Yeah, he's just gone. I mean, I really like the initial idea from Teapot. It's like, oh, yeah, like I can just kind of do similar things as prior. But you can't do that against uh, Pyre and Mithra because Foresight, because they can actually catch up with you in the air and juggle you. They can anti-air you reliably. And if you're gonna recover against Pyra from below, good luck. Okay. Yeah, able to get some good solid damage though. And actually this might be a stock right here. Yeah, evens it up. Only taking about 23%. So you know, this is not actually the end of the world, despite the fact that he got, you know, his entire soul set of flame and cast into the pits of hell not a minute ago. Um, oh, Foresight not actually gonna be able to, you know, Get, a, get an opening for Jonathan. And I love the use of just throwing out that power wave because it can, uh, the way that Mithra's hitbox works when she goes for that uh, photon edge, is that the one where she goes zoom, zoom, zoom? Yeah, that's the side B. That's the side B. That it can just in, uh, intercept her as we've already seen. And now very even percents between these two. Oh, that could be big though. Blazing Edge putting Teapot off stage. And then I love the spacing. Just and that's gonna be another hit. A back air to close out the stock. Teapot needs to immediately turn this around. Otherwise, you know, as we were saying before, Mithra and Pyra both are really good characters when they have the lead. Uh, and we're probably gonna be seeing that lead get extended right here. Oh man, trades are not what you want as Teapot right now. Oh my god, Mithra can crouch under the crack shoot. It may be something that doesn't happen uh, all that frequently because you constantly see Mithra, uh, Mithra and Mithra players just throwing out these uh, really, really strong hitboxes. But just be being able to take a moment and maybe even like looking for down tilts, being able to crouch under crouch shoot, crouch under crack shoot, that's an insane buff. But I mean, so is that burn up and deleting Pyra from center stage, who is heavier than Mithra, but. I guess you don't have to worry about that when you just keep Terry in disadvantage for like several, several moments at a time. Ooh. We are getting to the point right now where that comeback mechanism that's built into Terry Bogard's character design might start rearing its head. One more hit and he's, uh, especially from Pyra, yeah, he is at go percent. Well, this is not necessarily a position you want to be in on the ledge against a Pyra, but it does give him access to some of those really powerful moves. Oh, one of the big... Is that going to be it? Yeah. Wow. Mm. He just gamed on him. As soon as he got go, that was it. He didn't get touched after that. I mean, it, it was something that Terry players do uh, very, very frequently. This neutral getup uh, into immediate Buster Wolf because the forward input of the neutral getup counts for the input of Buster Wolf. And, I mean, Jonathan just looks so scared in his... Uh, it, in that aerial situation because he would look so worried for power geyser which yeah i mean reasonably so but throwing out an air dodge like that is incredibly risky uh, this was this was obviously a super strong start look how big this spike is by the way uh, super strong start from jonathan but he wasn't able to just keep that momentum going he ended up uh, looking for a lot more two frames when the answer was right in front of him in that first stop just Get, uh, get your hits when you're allowed to. Uh, don't try and do too much. And don't try to overcomplicate Terry's mediocre recovery. If he goes high, you can react to that like he did. And if he goes low, that's free real estate. Three, two, one, go! Alright, we're going to be having stage two on Pokemon Stadium. Now, what do, you, what do you think is the thought process here for switching to this stage as opposed to FD? So on, on an FD and on stages with the massive aerial uh, space, Teapot is allowed to do things like the uh, like the power dunks that he's been known to do because he can just freely cover the air with massive hitbox and spikes and can uh, uh, and is plus on block. 
you have a little bit of platforms here, you got a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more room to uh, defend yourself and properly anti-air, while still having the space to move that Mithril bikes. Yeah, we're already seeing that he seems to be favoring the Pyra on this stage. And all right, it's doing all right for him so far, although both of these players are deep in the red right now. Both of them can die to pretty much the, the gentlest of love taps. Ooh, down there's not actually going to connect to anything else, so it's not quite enough just yet. But whoever takes this first stock is going to be massive. He goes for the upbeat, but the roll behind. Both of these guys are still alive. I think that should be it, though. No, gonna be just barely hanging on. Beautiful air dodges that attack. That's something that we've seen him teapot catch so many people unaware with. And he actually punishes the power dunk. That's gonna be the uh, the uppy out of shield. And now switching to Mithra. I like the idea behind that. Recognizing that the extra weight from Pyra is probably not gonna mean much at that percent. And so just stay incredibly mobile. Just. Oh, get your hits where you can, and all of a sudden, now he's at death percent. Oh, my lord. He just, he did not respect the power dunk, uh, the power dunk in order to close the gap uh, yet again. Like, that's, it's been kind of tricky from Jonathan's uh, edge guarding sense. He's had a lot uh, better of results. Yeah, standing at ledge and trying to go for these, uh, these hits below ledge. But now you can, you have Teapot at 116, and this... <laughs> At 99 to, to 60, you have a lead. At 116 to 60, this game's even. <laughs> he completes the jab. Very, it is oh. just so tense. It does so... Uh, every one of these Terry hits does so much damage. That's going to be massive, though. Not only is it good because it gets the stock lead, not only is it good because it deletes the rage, but no longer does Teapot have access to those big go time moves, which, at the very least, lets Jonathan breathe a little bit more easy right now. But he cannot re less, rest on his laurels because at any instant, you know, Terry still has so much raw kill power. Oh, we might be seeing that come out right here. Just barely avoiding that side B. And now Jonathan once again at the ledge in control. A forward smash. I don't know if he has a jump. He does and actually goes past the ledge with the up B. Really smart there. Definitely was not expecting it. And now he might be able to close out the stock. I don't even... That was such a strange interaction. But he does manage to clean up here. 90%. Not a great spot to be in, but he is alive and... Pretty soon, he's going to have a. Uh, he's going to have access to those super powerful comeback moves. You gotta watch your shield. Pyra can certainly put up a ton of shield damage, and one shield poke will do it. But not another comeback. Not even without the go. He doesn't need it. He just needs his power dunk. <laughs> oh. Man. What happened uh, to the game plan that Jonathan had been doing so well prior? He'd been going for so many more oh. grabs. Ah, and there's gonna be it the up b i'm not sure exactly what happened right there he avoided the rising hit but then did he roll into the landing hit? he avoided the rising hit but i think we can see that on the replay here he was rolling on the platform so yeah he air dodged he rolled again and he rolled instead of just holding shield which he holds shield here that's a that's a that's a punish. That's absolutely a that extremely have, hard punish. Could that have been the game? If it he could have been. I don't think he was close enough to reliably get something like rising tackle or up smash out of shield, but at the very least you're in advantage. Would he have had enough time or like he could have like done roll behind maybe in shield. No, he wouldn't have had enough time to do that. But he would even have enough time to go for the um I forget the name of it, the bigger geyser attack uh he would have to drop shield which is then 11 frames and then go for power geyser but i i he might have had enough time but he absolutely i think <laughs> he, uh, to, to drop shield and go for up tilt power geyser which is a true combo ah so. uh, yeah it's up tilt it's quick. Three, two, one, all right i'm actually surprised we don't have fd banned considering the fact that we already saw what teapot can do on this stage but for whatever reason we'll see whether this ta this uh, particular allowance will come back to bite jonathan or not he is doing pretty well for himself at the moment 48 percent pretty much uncontested teapot been trapped in the corner since the game has started and oh 
Now we have Pyro. That might be it. Oh, just barely hanging on. But I don't know how he cannot take another one of those. And no, he is aware of that. He's been able to, to get 3% from like an errant singular move. Oh man, 140. We were talking about how the comeback power is great, but he's... All right, so all of a sudden, we're seeing a lot of these up Bs coming out from Jonathan. He has the room to sort of, you know, throw them out and work with it. But at the same time, uh, you want to have as strong... You want to maintain... You want to get as much off of the lead that you have earned as possible. And, all right, finally right there, actually going to be punishing that power dunk with the F tilt out of shield. Switching back to Mithra immediately. He's going to be trapped at the ledge, though. Both players really like missing their finishers in a lot of spots. So many combos just getting dropped early in this game, and this we could have had a we could have certainly be living in a very different universe right now. But man, these upbeats that are shield. I mean, you mentioned them prior. They are uh, overzealous. I think is the word I'm going to be using. And <laughs> I mean, they're giving Teapot free reign to. Free reign to just start immediately get something started as soon as they miss. Speaking of solid whiff punish on the uh, on the photon edge as well. Foresight. I mean that's kind of why you see uh, Jonathan just air dodging and rolling just so frequently as the switch to the pirate is just so pristine. Uh, coming out of uh, the uh, coming out of the swap and immediately going uh, going for the downer. I mean, that's kind of what you like to see with how quick the stance change is for Pyra and Mithra. Like, I'm gonna go from one to the other and always make certain I'm the best one for any situation instead of just being uh, percent focused. All right, we now have Teapot has been doing a pretty good job keeping his head above water. But pretty soon he has to start thinking about how to actually get the kill on this Pyra. Otherwise, you know, all the damage he's done up until this point will be meaningless. But once he has to start thinking about that sort of thing, you can already see that the, the, the game plan has sort of changed. It's a lot more defensive coming out from Jonathan. He's spacing backwards, not trying to get hit by these errant attacks. That downer was so big. Let's see if he can actually get a finish off of it great job getting past the blazing edge we've been seeing that move thrown out quite a bit and at last the punish comes through teapot now at 86 percent we saw how in game one he managed to make this comeback happen game two he did not so <laughs> this time around let's see how he fares he doesn't have access to those powerful go moves he's just in Pyra's face, following through, catching the rolls. A great air dodge, though, was going to be avoiding the huge damage that he possibly could have eaten. But I now want to shout out Jonathan's commitment to SDIing up and away, because that down tilt jab jam power uh, jab jab Buster roll is a true combo. But with enough SDI up and away, you can pop yourself just far enough away from in order to get out of uh get uh, get away from the buster wolf and super fin super good finisher from jonathan i really liked how he stuck to his game plan a little bit more in this game three i mean game two got really really close and really really heated very quickly but instead of getting flustered he still went for his grabs he still played on the ground where he had access to shield and he he closed out the stock when he had the opportunity all right, we're going to be seeing game four now. Jonathan just needs one more. Do you think we're going to be seeing FD again? Because I felt like game one was really good. And even game three, it was all right for him. But do you think maybe there's a... Oh, oh right, no, we are going to be seeing the FD. I think I agree with this. Um, I don't think it was the stage that held him back last time. So let's see, you know, as we move into this next game. Okay, this is a lot better of a start for Teapot this time around. Immediately dishing out 68% and being able to fantastically outspace most of these moves that Jonathan's thrown out. Okay, that's another power dunk, just getting even more damage in right there. Okay, another one of those, and that's going to get him killed, though. Wow, great job from Teapot just avoiding that and punishing so effectively.
Photon Nedge is super minus, just like on hit, on whiff. If you don't hit that move, uh, or on on whiff and on block, excuse me. If you don't hit that move, then you're gonna be eating basically whatever punish your opponent wants. And T5, no, there's no no slim pickings for punishes Terry can throw out. This character's damage is nuts. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, doesn't actually get hit by the up smash. And this is actually the first time we've really seen Teapot with the big lead. It feels like even the games that Teapot has managed to win, or even kept close, he's been down for the entire part of it. But this time around, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but there is a fire in his belly, and he is breathing hot air all over Jonathan at the moment. That's going to be another stock, possibly? No, just barely hanging on. And... At this point, though, 157%, and you said before, there were so many options available to Terry in order to kill, and there it finally happens, and this is an entire, fresh, clean stock difference between these two players right now. This is not looking like any of the other games so far we've seen this set. Now, it's almost completely swayed in the, uh, in Teapot's favor, and it's... I mean, he's kind of cashing in on uh, so many of these uh, resources and reads that he's had on uh, Jonathan uh, throughout the de uh, throughout this set thus far. I mean, no time like the present because you need to you need to make a statement before going into game five. Oh, the, the air dodge coverage with the rising tackle is so so good. Oh, even with those. Yeah, even with that big hit, it's still not enough. And now all you've done is put Teapot at go time. You fool. You missed your chance. Okay, actually, that Blazing Edge, pretty big. Look at all the damage that's been done. And now we do have one stock piece for each player here. Definitely not what I would call an even game. Uh, we, you know, earlier when Teapot was the one who was, you know, behind, he has that built-in comeback mechanism. Pyramithra don't really have that to the same degree. I mean, yeah, Pyra can kill dummy early, but beyond that, it's gonna have to be pretty solidly earned if Jonathan wants to make a comeback here, but this game, this time around, doesn't seem like it's gonna be the case. We now have a game five between these two players. How does he do it? How does he every time in these clutch situations, like when he either needs to take a stock or he needs to get off of ledge, because the ledge is the place he loses, I'm just gonna jump from ledge power dunk. What do you do about it? Well, in this case, I mean, die, but. Yeah, it was also good recognition that that was something that uh, Jonathan had been doing quite a bit, was throwing out the blazing edge to try and help out with these edge guards. And against a lot of characters, yeah, that's pretty good. Cause like, what are they gonna do about it? Uh, what is Terry gonna do about it? He's gonna jump power dunk and you're dead. Right. Got so much distance and has a lot of, a lot of punish. Uh, built behind it, but it is Jonathan's counterfeit. It is the he does have potentially the rob in his back pocket should he feel like going to them. I feel like he he should rely on stage counterpicks before he relies on character counterpicks. Um, uh, what was it? That was game two. They went to PS2, and looks like we're gonna be going back here. Um, on the Immediately, the first thing is that uh, Teapot cannot go for those power dunks towards the corner, not nearly as frequently. Uh, but there is also still quite a bit of room on this stage. You know, last time around, Teapot had that fantastic opener. This time around, it looks like once more we have Jonathan, who's getting all of the damage early on. All of this Mithra percent 60, and it seems to be growing, but... Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, let's see when he's actually going to switch to Pyra. So far, still sticking to the Mithra and taking a little bit of damage. All right, and there we finally see it. This is, it seems like he favors Pyra on this stage in particular. Maybe it's just because of those platforms or the layout or the comfort of it. But I've, we've seen just some amazing, amazing stuff from the Pyra. But as it stands, Teapot, ever since the first. 30 seconds of the game has honestly been playing really well. He might even fact take the stock here. No, not quite, but... Okay, doesn't actually manage to punish that Photon Edge. That was a fantastic swap. Definitely, Teapot was looking to punish the Pyra recovery and was not able to pivot in time. But now we have this Pyra. We know how scary this character can be. Just the size of the hitboxes and the strength of them. Teapot 
Oh, just getting clipped by that Blazing Edge, taking a ton of damage for it, being put on the ledge, and that's probably gonna do it, yeah. Oh my god, the mix of rage, but also the wrecking, the awareness that, like, yeah, a lot of these swings that Pyron Mithra can do, you can cover with just uh, some of your emergency exit buttons, some of these quick burst tools, and no better than Prominence Revolt in a lot of instances. Oh, and now, okay, t is swinging for the fences, and don't sleep on Terry Smash, don't sleep on Terry's reversal options at all, but if you've got an opponent starting to be a little bit flustered in a Game 5 spot, you're going to be feeling pretty good, and I mean, these, uh, these grabs and these dash attacks to try and catch landings are a great spot that Jonathan has been mixing between a pretty uh, pretty well throughout this game five. They carry these huge punishes. And that cross does that is oh, insanity how good that button is. Okay, we now once again have Teapot with the percent lead here. Oh jeez, but he's way out there. That rising tackle just enough to get him back to the stage. Not able to convert off of that Blazing Edge, but we now have Terry at go percent, but 115 trapped at the ledge against this Pyra, and we've already seen the horrors, the atrocities that this character can commit. But at the same time, that platform is massive. We saw how in the end of the last game, it was the... Oh, okay, that's actually going to be it. That's really, really big for uh, Teapot. Yeah, the, the platforms have been basically preventing Teapot from using the, the power dunk to get off of the ledge like he was when we were on FD. But doesn't seem to matter too much. He does have the stock lead here. The percent lead as well seems to be growing. And with access to those powerful go moves, it has to be really scared. Jonathan getting clipped, getting smacked by that geyser. He's at 66 already, and he's still trying to figure out just how can he possibly kill this Terry. The forward tilt from across the stage isn't going to do it. Oh, but he gets trapped underneath the PS2 stage. That's a huge, huge pickup for Jonathan. At this point, he's still has a lot of work to do, and he need the Mithra in order to get it done. But nonetheless, this is manageable. This is something that Teapot cannot be too overconfident. He's put in a lot of work. He's done a lot of great stuff so far this entire set, but now we're down to the one stock a piece. Five games in, and only 10% separating these two. And based on the fact that, honestly, despite the kill power that both of these characters have, they've been surviving to some really high percents. Just the respect between these two players. Oh man, 100%. That's it. But that might actually be it. And it is. Doesn't even let him get to go time. That's the native risk that you constantly have when you start... Uh... <laughs> when you start throwing out so many attacks so frequently. I mean, we see it constantly with Teapot. He doesn't shield. Instead, he decides to get out of the way with the native movement that comes with so many of these specials. And uh, Jonathan turned the tables on him, finally, after five games. And after that game four, where it looked really rough to try and go air to air with Teapot, he finally called him out called out the the power dunk with a sh the strongest down air in the game just boom full combo i would have liked to see him play mithra a little bit more throughout the set because he would get him to 60 or 70 and then just play neutral with pyra at those high percents which can be a little bit risky against uh, against terry if you don't have that mobility in neutral uh that that mithra has but he wrapped it up in a clean way. And if you're constantly putting on your opponent on ledge, you don't always need to be Mithra. Yeah, that's a that's a very, very solid winner's finals game five. Jonathan punching their ticket into grands. And we'll be getting uh, that means the path to grand finals is set for the losers.